inspiration would probably come from, uh, obviously, um, a lot of my stories are inspired by uh, Aboriginal myths or uh, Aboriginal heritage, Aboriginal um, creation stories, um, and and I a lot of, and, and a lot of Aboriginal visual art. Um, but I, I suppose it's the storytelling behind uh, uh, Aboriginal creation stories, uh, so to speak, um, or uh, you know the stories behind a lot of strong traditional visual art that um, uh, has been quite inspirational to a lot of my work. And it's not just about traditional Aboriginal uh, mythology or, or stories, it's also about the current stories about uh, Indigenous issues in the 21st century that also stimulate uh, a lot of my storytelling uh, through dance theatre. Through education, I think arts, feeding the consciousness of arts and uh, the richness of of what art is. I mean, it's just you know, Aboriginal culture. Um, art is a huge part of their life. You know, it filters through a whole myriad of mediums, uh, and it's such an importance. And it's just a shame, you know, like um, you know, 250 years ago that um, it, it, it you know colonialism didn't you know saw that richness about the arts and actually put it into our social psychic and. It'd just be great to give it um, arts and importance in our society, um, especially live theatre. I, th I think you know having that performing arts live theatre experience is uh, is a healthy one. I don't know, probably John Travolta and Saturday Night Fever. That's always a good one. I think um, yeah, it's pretty pretty smooth. Some of those moves. <laughs> I come from a big family, a family of 12 kids. Uh, you know, there was always a uh, performance in our house. There was always song, there was always music. I got six older sisters who were really instrumental in, in, in um, introducing us to great music, great pop music. Um, and, you know, we always would gather and have, um, you know, a lot of gatherings with cousins coming down and lots of storytelling. So I think it was inevitable that um, I was going to end up in the performing arts. Um, it was just really a lot of homegrown sort of experiences. Look, oh, I, I suppose it's just the uh, the sustainability of Bangara Dance Theatre. I mean, you know, like it's just a foundation, a cultural, artistic, performing arts foundation that has survived for 23 years in the mainstream. Um, but and especially for an indigenous um, dance company uh, in the mainstream. Uh, and also, I think for me, it would probably be, um, you know, being a part of the, uh, the Sydney 2000 Olympics um, opening ceremony where I had the opportunity of co-directing with Rhoda Roberts, uh, bringing a thousand uh, Indigenous performers together. And uh, yeah, that was a special moment in my career. There was a couple actually. Uh, when I was about 15, I actually got a job, I was DJing. Um, and I think I um, got snuck into this nightclub to DJ um, and uh, the security had to protect me in case the police came in because I was underage. So um, I think that only lasted um, a, a couple of gigs actually. <laughs> uh, and then after that I, I, I got into, I was actually a trainee law clerk. I was working for the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Legal Service in Brisbane. So that was really interesting. Um, it, it opened my mind about um, black social um, issues actually. I think you always want to have a sense of, um, a, you know, a direction of knowing uh, what lies ahead in the future. And, um, you know, I, I suppose I run an arts company, so you're, you know, you, you, you get government funding and you always have, the, you have to be ahead of yourself and um, you know, whether you're on trying to fund and you've always got to plan the next three years. So, you know, I sort of know what it's like to sort of, you know, plan ahead. Um, so, um, yeah, I suppose it's if it gives you a great strength of direction in your life, then that's that's a good thing. Mm -hmm.